Howdy, folks. Your attention, please. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hello, and welcome to Discovery Land. My name is Victoria, and I will be your guide on this adventure through yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. As you cross the drawbridge to Sleeping Beauty's castle, you begin to make out the sounds of Fantasyland. The enchanting music from the King Arthur Carousel plays. Children drag their parents to Peter Pan's flight, Snow White's scary adventures, Mr. Toad's wild ride, and the Mickey Mouse Club Theater. Just beyond these exciting attractions, you catch a glimpse at a towering sailing ship. It is quite decorative with deep orange and blue wooden paneling and tan trim. It has ornate windows. You spot some cannons peeking out from its sides. Could this be some sort of a warship? On its top deck, great masts reach up towards the sky. And at the top of them, you realize from the flags being flown that this is a pirate ship. As you drop closer to the ship, you hear the sound of rushing water. Behind it and to its right, you see a rocky looking mountain. Or is it a cave with hidden treasure? A giant skull carved from rock sits near the top. Water is falling from its mouth, as well as from several other points around the skull. You see it pouring into the lagoon that surrounds the pirate vessel across from it. Tropical trees surrounding the area sway in the breeze, creating the look of a secluded cove right in the middle of Fantasyland. As you approach the ship, you notice a peculiar door on its side, and to get there, you must cross a wooden pier. It is then that you see the sign explaining what this location is. This is the Chicken of the Sea Pirate Ship Restaurant. When Disneyland opened on July 17, 1955, children were excited to visit Fantasyland. Unlike the wilds of Frontierland, which represented the past, or the modern, well, at least at the time, aesthetics of futuristic Tomorrowland, Fantasyland celebrated the imagination. It was there that guests could take flight to the skies of London with Peter Pan, or spend time retracing Snow White's steps through the frightening forest. Or they could take a leisurely boat ride on the storybook land canal boats, or pretend they were a wild animal on the Casey Jr. Circus train. But they would have to wait until the following month until they could take their Peter Pan adventures a step further. On August 29th that year, the Chicken of the Sea Pirate Ship Restaurant opened. Next to Sleeping Beauty Castle, the pirate ship became the biggest visual icon in all of Fantasyland. If you're wondering how the pirate ship, based in part on the Jolly Roger from the Disney animated classic, Peter Pan found its way into Fantasyland, well, that's an interesting story. You see, while the restaurant did not open until August, it was present in Fantasyland on opening day. In their jointly written book from 1955, Disneyland, The Nickel Tour, Disney Imagineers Bruce Gordon and David Mumford write, As construction of Fantasyland reached a frantic pace prior to opening in 1955, it became apparent that there wasn't enough room left in Fantasyland to build the pirate ship. So space was cleared behind the Main Street Opera House, which was being used as the lumber mill, and the entire ship was constructed backstage. Shortly before opening, the fantasy of the flying ship came true when the Chicken of the Sea pirate ship actually flew into Fantasyland, courtesy of a nearby construction crane. End quote. Originally, 
The Chicken of the Sea Pirate Ship restaurant was painted in vibrant red with white trim, not too dissimilar from what you might expect from a stereotypical barn. But as time went on and the Disney Imagineers had time to go back and rework the things that they rushed to complete before opening day, the color scheme changed and the design became much more intricate. The inside of the ship housed the counter service restaurant itself. While it did slightly resemble the lower deck of a ship, what with its wooden paneling and natural hues, it was far more modern than the exterior. A cafeteria-style ordering area displayed the food options available for order. Dimly lit lanterns hung from the ceilings, and cast members took your order and sent you on your way to enjoy your meal outside. If you visited after 1956, you could glimpse the Skyway passing overhead. And if you were riding the Skyway, you got to enjoy a bird's eye view of the pirate ship. To help sell the theme, the ship had always sat in a simple pond. But in 1960, notable enhancements were made. The pond was extended and Skull Rock, from Disney's Peter Pan, was constructed adjacent to the pirate ship. The large skull sat atop detailed rockwork and waterfalls fell from the skull's mouth and various points around the rocks. At night, the skull's eyes glowed green. Palm trees and other tropical plants were added to enhance the theme, and guests could take their chicken of the sea goodness to the shaded seating areas around Skull Rock. Some of these tables and seats were meant to look like barrels of pirate loot. And if you wanted to get up close and personal with the skull itself, you could actually walk directly below it and its waterfalls while passing through the seating area. Occasionally, pirates would appear near the Chicken of the Sea pirate ship restaurant with talking parrots in tow to put on shows and interact with guests. By this point in Fantasyland's history, the pirate ship and Skull Rock area had become a small yet stunning oasis within Disneyland. According to photographs of the restaurant's interior located at the Dave Land blog, which I will link in the show notes, the food menu of the Chicken of the Sea Pirate Restaurant, at least at one point in time during the 1960s, was as follows. Tuna Clipper Salad, 90 cents. Tuna Dietetic Salad, 90 cents. Shrimp Cocktail, 95 cents. Tuna Boat Salad, 55 cents. Tuna Pie Pastry Shell, 55 cents, tuna burger, 55 cents, tuna sandwich, 55 cents, and fruit tart with whipped cream, 30 cents. For beverages, you could have an iced tea for 20 cents, coffee for 10 cents, milk for 25 cents, or a chocolate drink for 15 cents. In 1969, Chicken of the Sea ended its sponsorship of the restaurant. It then became known as Captain Hook's Galley. Then, in 1982, Captain Hook's Galley closed permanently. Disney was hard at work at the new Fantasyland that would open in 1983, and unfortunately, the pirate ship and Skull Rock were simply not in its plans. One of the goals of the new Fantasyland was to improve crowd flow. This entailed the relocation of the King Arthur Carousel to its current position, where the Mad Tea Party previously resided. Dumbo the Flying Elephant, which originally stood just west of Captain Hook's galley, was relocated in order to create a new access path to Frontierland. Dumbo would be relocated to the area where Captain Hook's galley and Skull Rock were located. According to legend, Disney originally had planned to relocate their pirate ship near the entrance to the Storybook Land Canal boats. However, it did not survive being moved, and Disney scrapped those plans. Of course, this is simply a well-established rumor that has never been outright confirmed by Disney or the Imagineers who worked on the new Fantasyland project. If you visit Fantasyland today, there is little to no evidence of Captain Hook's galley or Skull Rock. But if you know where to look, you might find something interesting. Near the entry into the queue for Dumbo the Flying Elephant is a secluded seating area. Immediately behind it is some rock work with a single waterfall. It is very likely that a little bit of skull rock remained to serve as theming for the area. 
This singular feature may be the only remaining evidence of Captain Hook's galley and Skull Rock. At the Disneyland Hotel, there was once even a nod to the restaurant at the Neverland Pool, which had opened in 1999 and featured a pirate ship play area in a simpler replica of Skull Rock. That was demolished when the area became the e-ticket pool in 2011. Perhaps the closest you can get to experiencing Captain Hook's galley and Skull Rock is by going to Disneyland Paris. In Adventureland, there is a similarly themed restaurant called, wait for it, Captain Hook's Galley. And next to it is a different version of Skull Rock, complete with waterfalls spilling into the lagoon below. So next time you are visiting Fantasyland in Disneyland, head on over to Dumbo the Flying Elephant. Take a spin and know that you are flying over the area where Captain Hook's galley once stood. Visit the small seating area behind Dumbo's queue and imagine you are enjoying a tuna burger near Skull Rock. And remember what once was one of the most richly themed areas of Disneyland's original Fantasyland, the Chicken of the Sea Pirate Ship Restaurant. Disneyland is an incredible place, and around every corner, whether you realize it or not, is some hidden history waiting to be discovered. I hope that you have enjoyed this trip into Discoveryland. Be sure to tune in next time for another adventure into the vibrant history of the Magic Kingdom. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Discoveryland Show and on Twitter at Discoveryland VC. Until next time, bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Disneyland has now ended its normal operating day. We hope you've enjoyed your visit to the Magic Kingdom and that you'll be back with us again soon.